G'day guys and gal. Organized religion is a disease and nothing represents that better than the Warhammer setting, where belief systems are able to manifest into demons and other naughty things. However, you don't need the literal forces of hell to realize that brainwashing people is wrong. No legion represents this greater than the word bearers, a legion of space marines led by a Primarch who was so desperate for God to be real that he plunged the galaxy into eternal death and suffering just to prove that his imaginary friend is better than yours. Now, I like to joke about Lorgar being a pedo, or that his sons are just a bunch of neckbeard larpers with sticks up their ass, but the word bearers are actually an interesting bunch, and I would say probably have one of the healthiest relationships with Chaos out of all the traitor legions. Obviously not a high bar to set, but that still counts for something. Before we get started, I've recently launched the Major Kill Mini that you can use in tabletop for Warhammer 40k, Fantasy, Age of Sigma, or just for as an avatar for a slick D&D campaign you want to run. All the prices are in Australian, so a model with shipping comes to about $30 USD, cheaper than a lot of Games Workshop models and a lot better in my opinion. For everyone that buys a Major Kill model and paints it, you will get your model featured during the intro of one of my videos in the future. So if you've ever wanted dozens of thousands of people to see your painting skills, then here's your chance. The STL files as well as the helmet and shoulders are available separately, so you can convert your official models into your own Magical homebrew if you choose to do so. Everything is available for sale on the Magical website. Today we'll go over who the word bearers are and what they got up to during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. We'll also go over the life of their Primarch Lorgar, and if he actually had a point about chaos, or was he just a religious nut who needed to be kept away from childcare centers. Then we will finish off with a small dive into the lore of some of the more well-known word bearers. Let's get into it. When the God Emperor of Mankind first created the Primarchs, he would read them bedtime stories whilst they were in their gestation capsules. For Rogel Dawn, he read... 10 books on architecture. For Conrad, he read old Batman comics. And for Lorgar, he picked up a random fiction novel he found in an old library. Unfortunately, this turned out to be the Holy Bible, hence the seeds of corruption were planted in Lorgar when he was very young. By the time the Biggie realized his mistake and attempted to read him books by the great L. Ron Hubbard to undo the damage, it was too late. The gods of chaos had snatched the baby Primarchs from their nursery using some warp spaghetti and scattered them across the galaxy. Each Primarch landed on a different planet which coincidentally matched their skills and attributes, for the most part. Some landed on civilized worlds and quickly became gods among their people, whilst others, such as the abortion poster child Angron, fell on shitty planets and became slaves with nails in their brain. Lorgar fell into the planetary equivalent of a church filled with registered sex offenders, which I guess you would just call a normal church. He was quickly found by a dickhead called Corferion, who had been exiled from the Society of Colchis, the planet, due to the fact that he tried to kitty fiddle seven-year-olds, which was two years shy of the acceptable age of kitty fiddling on Colchis. See, Colchis, despite my pedo jokes about it, was actually okay. Mortarion's planet literally had AIDS and was controlled by necromancers, so a bit of faith seemed like a walk in a park, until you realize that the dominant religion of Colchis was actually the worship of the gods of chaos. Whoopsies. As Lorgar rapidly aged, Corferion realized he was special and he could be used to regain favor in the church, called the Covenant, or even dominate it. Cor was a smart guy. He realized that Lorgar was a little slut and liked it rough. So instead of winning his loyalty and devotion through being a cool dad and buying him ice cream, he instead physically, emotionally, and I'm going to say sexually abused Lorgar. He would abuse him for the slightest transgressions. One time Lorgar was like, Yo, I know there are four gods that we follow, and they're all cool and stuff, but I think there is another god even greater than they, a super god with golden greased abs and flowing brown hair. And Corferion, disgusted by the thought of a male over the age of nine, beat the shit out of Lorgar for that. Now, the abuse did stop, but not because Lorgar became a 10 foot tall demigod, no. It stopped because one time Kor tried to get his friends to beat up Lorgar, and instead they were like, no, fuck you, and try to kill Kor. Now, that would have been an epic, but Lorgar had some hectic Stockholm Syndrome or something because he saved Kor from the people who were attacking Kor because Kor wanted them to beat up Lorgar. Yeah, look, Lorgar wasn't the smartest Primarch. However, since saving him, Kor decided that he was too old anyway, and the abuse ended. Lorgar received more visions of the Emperor and began to create his own religion, a religion that basically said that the Chaos Gods were lame and that the Emperor was their daddy. As Lorgar was creating this religion of the One, he was also conquering each city and cultures, one by one. In no time at all, he had taken the entire planet. 
But if you thought that a Primarch who wields religion like a weapon would have a peaceful takeover, then you were sorely mistaken. The planet was divided between people who believed in the One and others who believed in the Chaos Gods. People in Warhammer are extremely bigoted and narrow-minded, so instead of just coexisting, the two religions engage in a planet-wide genocide, with Lorga and his religion of the One coming out on top. Yes, Lorgar, the guy who felt the chaos first and pretty much caused the Horus Heresy, was also the Primarch who eradicated chaos from his home planet. While this was going on, Lorgar's sons, then called the Imperial Heralds, were created. Unlike pretty much all the other legions who required their original names through their renown or achievements and then later through the whim of their Primarch, the 17th Legion was named the Imperial Heralds by the Emperor upon their creation. They were to be the legion that stomped out religion and spread the truth of atheism. They were heralds of the Imperial Truth, again adding to the hectic irony of what they ended up doing instead. Once they beat a planet's military might with ruthless efficiency, they would pull down all the religious buildings, burn all the religious texts, and use the fire from those texts they would burn everyone who didn't accept the Imperial Truth. This system had the added benefit of also removing all pedophiles from the planet that the Heralds took over. Within a year of Lorgar's victory, the Emperor arrived. Now a lot of people bring up a good point here. The Emperor did not want to be seen as a god, yet walked around in 12 foot tall golden armor while glowing and had a flaming sword. If he toned down the aesthetics a bit, maybe it would be a bit easier to be like, oh look, a powerful psyker, instead of, holy guacamole, it's the god emperor of mankind. Either way, Lorgar fell to his knees and declared a lengthy religious celebration. For months they partied, the Biggie disapproving heavily of a planet which if it had been found by the Imperial Heralds without Lorgar on it, would have likely been exterminated. The Biggie was like, Lorgar, my son. And Lorgar was like, yes, God Emperor, Father God. I am not a god, I am just a really, really cool guy. Ironically, the Emperor denying his own divinity only made Lorgar think he was even more of a god, as what kind of all-powerful mortal would display such humility? During this time, various problems would begin to emerge. Firstly, Corferion, that dick, was given superhuman abilities, and another even bigger dick, called Erebus, was turned into a space marine. Corferion and Erebus would more or less then be responsible for the entirety of the galaxy's problems, all the way until the Tyranids arrived. Lorgar wasn't stupid, however. I mean, well, I mean, he was stupid. After all, he thinks getting soul raped by demons is a good idea, but he was smart enough to know that inheriting a legion full of atheists given to him by the galaxy's biggest atheist weren't going to drink from his Kool-Aid straight away. It took years of subtle changes to the Terran-born heralds, as well as full religious induction of new recruits before the Legion was turned into the Word Bearers. Instead of being a slow Legion in terms of bringing planets into the Imperium due to them having to crush religion, they became a slow Legion because they spent so long building religion. Every planet they took over, they would spend months or even years converting them to see the Emperor as a god. As such, they were the slowest of the Legions by far. Now, the Emperor overlooked a lot of shit. I mean, a lot. He let Angron, that walking abortion, off the leash and barely gave a fuck when Angron started putting nails in his son's brains. The one thing he would not overlook, however, was a slow compliance rate. If Lorgar had done his weird religious voodoo but did it quickly, it's likely the Emperor never would have come for him. However, eventually probes were sent out to discover why Lorgar was so slow. I mean, everyone knew he was a weak little bitch, the weakest of the Primarchs in terms of combat ability for sure, but still, those probes discovered flourishing worlds with low crime rate and extremely high loyalty to the Imperium. However, they also discovered widespread gay conversion therapy as well as extreme levels of PTSD in all the choir boys two major symptoms of a nasty affliction. With this, the Emperor cracked it. He thought it was kinda cute originally how Lorgar wanted to gargle his spiritual balls, but now it was fucking with his mission to clap the galaxy's cheeks. Hence the Emperor did something that a lot of people think was a bit of a rookie error. He got the Ultramarines to blow up the Wordbearer's favourite city. He then psychically raped all of them and forced them to kneel before him, before then roasting the shit out of them for being a bunch of Bible jerking simps. I, however, think that the message that the Emperor was trying to put across was a good one. He basically said, If you want to know what it's like to serve a god, this is it. Your free will is gone. Your power is gone. You're all an insect beneath me. He wanted to show them that gods are assholes, and you don't need them. 
Whilst Lorgoth did finally accept that the Biggie was not a god, he still craved a god in his life. This kind of means that Lorgar would have fallen to chaos no matter what, unless the Biggie was able to manipulate Lorgar into spreading the imperial truth, tricking him into thinking it was a religion. Following that little incident, Lorga had an existential crisis and was told by Kor and Erebus that there were gods out there and he should go praise them instead. Hence, Lorga began his pilgrimage to find a sugar daddy. While he was off, he got his legion to tear across the galaxy and bring planets into imperial compliance at such a rate that it surpassed the other legions. Everyone thought Lorga had finally gotten the message, but instead Lorga was off playing with demons and just used this as a cover. These planets were also seeded with chaos corruption, so that when the time came, they declared their allegiance to chaos. Lorga went to the Eye of Terror and sent some of his sons to take a peek. Now putting someone in the Eye of Terror without telling them what is up is like tricking your mate to grab an electric chicken wire. It's not the zap that gets ya, it's the fact that you didn't know the zap was coming. Hence the marines that went in either died or were possessed by demons. But for some reason the possession was actually quite low key and pleasant. Kind of like those animes where the protagonist has a demon inside them and despite initially being like, ah demon get out you slut, eventually they learn to coexist in the one body and become friends. Foremost of these new demi-demons, called the Galvorbak, was Argul Tal, who was actually surprisingly chill for a demonic pedophile. Lorgar would then travel throughout the Eye of Terror, travelling through time with the help of a demonic guide to understand the nature of chaos. Sure, he was being manipulated, but to a way lesser degree than the other traitor Primarchs. He saw chaos for what it was and chose to join it anyway. He did not want there to be a massive war or for there to be mass suffering. He instead realized that for mankind to join in a harmonious relationship with hell, atheism had to go, and it was not going to go quietly. Now, as bad as it sounds, Lorgar's perception of chaos was actually not that bad. Balanced joinings of demons and humans were possible, as displayed through his Galvor back. The only issue, however, is that once Chaos gained control of the galaxy, it's likely that this balance would be shattered, and that Chaos's evil nature would remove all the cool parts. By the time Lorgar finished his pilgrimage, he was a servant of Chaos. Lorgar was still the little bitch boy Primarch though, and he knew that no one would follow him against the Emperor, especially if they had to shove tentacles up their ass to do so. Hence, he put his efforts towards corrupting Horus. This wasn't that hard, as Horus was already losing his shit over his ever encroaching male pattern boldness. Hence, when Horus was put into a coma due to chaos shenanigans, and then awoke from that coma due to more chaos shenanigans, Lorga had the leader he needed. From there, he helped orchestrate the Istvan drop site massacre, where the Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands were baited into attacking Horus, but ended up getting betrayed. Lorga very nearly died that day, and only survived due to hectic plot armor. See, during his pilgrimage, his demon guide said, Whatever you do, do not fight Korax at any point or you will die. However, Korax was tearing the Galvor back, Lorgar's favorite sons, a new arsehole, slaughtering them like sheep. It was really quite embarrassing for Chaos actually. So Lorgar stepped in and embarrassed himself and Chaos further, as Korax completely raped his asshole and disemboweled him really easily. Lorgar would have died that day if Conrad had not intervened and saved him. That's right, out of all the people, it was Psycho Batman that saved Lorgar. The funniest part about this was just before Lorgar fought Korax, he embraced his inner power and basically went Super Saiyan, yet still got completely fucked on. While this was happening, the rest of the word bearers led by Kor Pharon attacked Ultramar with the primary intention of crippling the Ultramarines and denying them a role in the Horus Heresy via creation of a hectic warp storm and a secondary role of destroying Macrag, the capital of Ultramar. Well, as I've said many times, attacking Ultramar is like headbutting a retard. No matter how much damage you do, you will always come off second best. Hence, Kor could not even get past the planet of Kalth. However, he was successful in creating the warp storm. The Wolfstorm was further grown by Lorgar and Angron burning a path through Ultramar, sacrificing entire worlds to feed the power required to keep the Wolfstorm alive. Gilliman was obviously not super down with this and gathered together what many could and chased Lorgar and Angron. Eventually, he caught up to them at Angron's home planet of Nukiria, which Angron was in the process of destroying because he was butthurt about the whole slavery thing they did to him. With Angron having fun on the surface of the planet, and Lorgar having not read Sun Tzu's Art of War book, Gilliman, even with his small ragtag fleet of broken ships, was able to engage both Lorgar and Angron's fleets. 
he destroyed Lorgar's flagship and nearly took over Angron's one before he deployed to the planet's surface. A hectic battle broke out and Gilliman faced Lorgar in a melee fight. Now Gilliman and Lorgar are arguably the worst Primarchs when it comes to fighting, so the fight between them was kinda like the fight from the Inbetweeners. It's not really clear who would have won, however Gilliman uppercutted the shit out of Lorgar and crushed his sternum, whilst Lorgar hit Gilliman in the face with his mace. Overall, I'd have to give it to Gilliman, purely because he was able to hold back Angron for a time despite missing half his face and being tired with his fight with Lorgar. Before Angron could kill Gilliman however, his brain nails climaxed and begun killing him, so Lorgar turned Angron into a demon prince. Gilliman saw this and was like, yeah, fuck that, and ordered a retreat. Lorga had grown to realize that Horus was shit at leading Chaos and decided he should take over instead. He bound Fulgrim to his will, and he planned out a pretty solid backstab on Horus that probably would have worked for anyone else other than Lorga. See, Lorga got betrayed, and when Horus arrived to meet him, Horus knew what Lorga was planning, and he beat the living shit out of him. Lorgar was then banished from the rest of the heresy, whilst the word bearers either pledged to Horus, continued to fight the Ultramarines, or went off to sulk with their daddy. Horus invades Terra, kills the glorious Hawk Boy, cripples the Emperor so badly that the Big E would forever remain a massive strain on the Imperium's healthcare system before he himself would be completely obliterated by the Emperor. The traitor legions are hunted across the galaxy and eventually all end up in the Eye of Terra. Lorga then becomes incredibly useless and begins having a fat wank to the endless tide of child pornography that the Chaos Gods provide him. At some point during this, he also ascends to become a demon prince, probably just because the Chaos Gods felt bad for him. He did break from his meditation once. Korax was still understandably mad about Istvan and had been single-handedly tracking down and slaughtering the entire Wordbearer's Legion. Korax at this point had embraced his darkness and had low-key become a loyalist demon. Lorga went out to confront him and was like, I am more powerful than I ever was. You will not be able to match the darkness of chaos. And then Corvus was like, heh heh boy, and proceeded to once again completely rape Lorgar and further embarrass Chaos. Lorgar ran away and claims to have went back to his tower to continue his meditation. However, I reckon he's just shitting himself and hiding. After all, Corvus did say that he now had his scent and that he would never stop hunting him. The word bearers were now without their Primarch, however stayed mostly coherent, like they were so organized that they had an official rule book which stated what reds they could dye their power armor. They fell under the control of either Erebus or Corferion, who headed a dark council. However, Kor and Erebus are fighting a subtle war against each other for control of the entire legion. With the opening of the Great Rift, it seems that maybe Lorgar will go out and do something, but he needs to deal with his Korax problem first. So now we know about Lorgar and the word bearers, I want to drill down a bit on a few of their key characters I mentioned. Firstly, Argil Tal. Now, don't get me wrong, Argil was still a bad person, but he had this sense of honor and personality that while evil, kind of showed that he wasn't a total piece of shit. He was Lorgar's favorite son and was best buddies with Khan before Khan went off the rails. Unfortunately for Argyll, he was stabbed in the back and killed by Erebus during the battle on Angron's planet, because Argyll's influence and bromanship with Khan would have prevented Khan from going completely insane and becoming the Avatar of Khorne. At least that's what Erebus says. I just think Erebus was a jealous prick. It was sad though, in Argyll's final moments, his demon was like, dude, kill Erebus now, kill him, he's going to kill you, fucking kill him, and Argyll was like, Bro, relax, he's not gonna- t uh, uh, uh. Then we have Erebus. Now everyone knows Erebus. Fuck Erebus. But do you know why he sucks so much? Well, he was pretty much the architect of the Horus Heresy. He was a Chaos worshipper even before he met Lorgar, and he bided his time. He introduced Lorgar to Chaos, he supplied the knife which turned Horus to Chaos, he killed Argul Tal, he twisted Tarek's body into a demon, and he was a smug asshole about it the whole time. Fortunately, he has been punished for his sins many times. Horus peeled off his face for being an uppity asshole, and Khan kicked the living shit out of him for killing Argul. Then we have Corferon, who's just as big of an asshole as Erebus, but fuck Corferion doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely. 
Gore was forever Lorgar's mentor, but he was also a stupid narcissist prick. At one point, he actually had Gilliman at his mercy, and instead of killing him, he stabbed him with a chaos knife to try and corrupt him, just like how Horace was corrupted. Trying to corrupt Gilliman is like trying to spread frozen butter on cold toast, hence Gilliman replied by punching a hole through Core, which Core survived because plot armor. The Wordbearers are a pretty disliked legion overall, due to their living characters being twats and their likeable characters being dead. Lorgar's original vision of chaos actually did have a valid point, and he was very well written in books such as The First Heretic. However, now he's just another pawn of the evil that is chaos. His morals and vision are broken, and there is nothing left except for a little pedo man who is scared of ravens. And that does us for today guys, the lore and story of Lorga and the word bearers. Remember guys, the magical minis are live and available. You could even convert them into word bearers if you want to. However, I can't remember the last time I saw anyone paint word bearers. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 gives you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai, and $10 gives you access to the Mage Killer Hentai calendar. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more pedo killing content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.